and we are live. Just about. There we are. There we are. There we are. Okay, and we have one, which would be me. Well, we'll just be talking. Oh, Julie's here. Hi, Julie. I'm on top up for a while. Yeah. Well, we'll get started here in a second. Yeah. Let's we'll see who else is joining us. Our agenda doesn't seem to be too long. No, but I'm sure we'll make it long. Mm. And hopefully we won't freeze up today. We'll see what happens. So, so Maybe so we far, have it outside, and then we can freeze up for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Real frozen. So Julie's here. So how are you doing, Julie? Um, what's what? the temperature today? It's minus six. Oh, it's balmy. It's only minus six. That's twenty-two degrees Fahrenheit. No, Brandon sent me a message. It says machine set up. Both Michael and I have wound bob and threaded the needle and ran a few seams through fab, spare fab. Like, watch out, we're in the big leagues now. <laughs> and Andy's here, I think. Is that Andy? I was mixing up names last week. Uh, nope, that's not Andy. It's just Sudi Q. And... So, hi, Sudi Q, how are you? Oh, it is Andy. Okay. Why didn't I write that down? I should have wrote that down on my sheet. I didn't. Oh, yeah, I did, in brackets. I, I'm going to have to blow this up. I can't read it. It's too small. Um, so, Andy's here. Julie's here. We've got five people. Catherine's here. Hi, Catherine. We're just waiting here to see if we get a few more people on. We've got seven up here now. What are you doing? Well, I'm pushing my seat up because you're too tall. Would you let me? Would you like me to push in your stool? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so I am Virginia here. Virginia's here. Hi, Virginia. Okay, so let's begin. I don't know. We don't have a lot to talk about, but we'll. I'm sure we'll find something. No. Um, what do you want to do? Get right into my mother. She's fine. We had the meeting this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow on my vlog in more detail. Uh, funny thing was, though, they didn't have my mother in the meeting with us, which I suppose we could have requested her if we wanted to. Actually, I didn't really want her at the meeting, so mm. it didn't bother me. No. But um, one funny thing, we were talking, and I said some I forget what, something about uh, trying to be diplomatic about it, said, well, my mother at times can be a little difficult and I said or how would you no, put no, it? No, 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 you said um, um, that uh, on outward appearances your mother always oh. looks like a she's always a sweet, sweet old, old lady, lady. Yep. and then about two of them looked at each other <laughs> and I said but I said she's not so away with family but I says oh well let's face it my mother can be difficult in fact she's just a bitch and they started to laugh apparently they had seen that side of my mother so I guess they knew what we were talking about. Well, I guess she does sort of begin to feel like they're family members. <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. Then they're like, well, maybe that's a compliment on their part. I don't know. But anyways, um, they looked at what she's been eating and stuff like that. And generally, the meeting went along quite nicely. And I think she's starting to get into the swing of things now. She's... She's being, she's participating, they said, in things, because they, they keep really good records there. I'm really impressed Yeah. with the care that's there. They know everything. They know what she's been eating, how she's feeling, where she's been, who's been there, the whole bit. They, they know keep, how much she weighs. She knows how, exactly how much she weighs, 105 pounds soaking wet. Um, that she hasn't lost any weight, but hasn't gained any weight. No. Um, they kind of laughed at the fact when I said, yeah, she threw up a few times when she first got in there, and 
And they said, yeah, the tomato-based stuff. And they kind of laughed. And I said, yeah, that's what she said. But I said, we think it was because we had brought her some chocolates and she woofed them down. And they said that that isn't necessarily uncommon. No. In uh, that sort of setting. And they said if they wanted, if I brought her over a box of chocolates, we could leave them at the nurse's station and they would dole them out to her like, you know, one or two a day or something like that at times. So she wouldn't just be plastering herself in them. Well, if we did this, sort of take note of that is just buy her smaller quantities yeah. of... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cass, is eating a snack from your haul shop? Oh. Yep, actually we are. So we'll talk about that one in a minute. But anyways... Mom's doing okay, and that's good. I just got off the phone from her before we started the live broadcast because I won't be able to call her or see her uh, for a little, about eight days, nine days. Well, technically, you can call her, but... Well, I'm not. Just my sister can look after my, that. My roaming package in the U.S. Mm -hmm. covers that. Well, today's conversation was very stimulating. So what's new? I always start with that. Oh, nothing much. And she's munching on something. And she started to cough. I said, you got a cold? She goes, no, no, no. She says, I'm eating a cookie. And I said, oh, okay. And she says, oh, yeah. And Doris, that's her roommate. Doris's daughters came over to visit her. And she, they brought my mother and Doris some eggnog. And I said, well, where the heck would they get eggnog this time of the year? She says, well, it's not easy, but they got it at Metro. And I said, did you check the um, expiration date no, on it? One of the grocery stores I was in this week had a whole pile of eggnog oh. on sale. Well, I didn't know she liked eggnog so much. Well, she's never ever asked for it before. No, I in know. The past. Now all and of now, sudden, now all of a sudden, someone else brings it to yeah, her. Yeah, well, that usually happens. Yeah, well, whatever. But that's pretty rich, comparing what they brought, too. So, I mean, if she gobbles mm -hmm. that down, she may be uh, her. I don't know. The stuff that, cookies. that the grocery store sells is often like, um, probably not quite as rich as. No, it depends. You can get it in different formats. When I mm -hmm. bought it, I used to buy the skim milk version mm -hmm. if I could get it. Because otherwise, it's pretty good. It's pretty um, rich. Why well, isn't it any more rich than chocolate milk? No. What? <laughs> Do you see me hurling it? <laughs> I have one little piece of chocolate, one little chocolate milk, and you get all uptight. Big deal. I no, like chocolate. I just... Cho milk. It's milk. It's good for you. Yeah, I know. No, you don't. I love chocolate milk. I could eat, drink chocolate milk every day. And you do. <laughs> I was waiting for this. I set you up for that, and you just got right in there, didn't you? Okay, so moving on. What's coming up on my vlog? Well, this week, I'm continuing my two new segments, one on the evolution of my scrapbooking that led to paper crafting and whatnot, and I'm continuing with the next part of doing the album. And uh, actually, <clears throat> I've gotten some favorable responses to that, so what I'm going to do is... I don't know how many weeks this series will go on, but once I'm finished the album, I've planned a couple of other uh, projects as well that I'll do over the weeks uh, in mixed media or something like that, um, because people seem to like those. And uh, yeah, so that's tomorrow. Now, the vlog, there may not be a vlog, and I'll say this again tomorrow on the vlog, there may not be a vlog next week, a week from this Monday, because we'll be in Florida. And I have no idea what we're going to have for an internet connection down there, which might as well mention that now. So Stephen and Walter Live may or may not happen next Sunday. Is Florida on the same timeline as we yeah. are? <coughs> same time. <coughs> Popcorn down my throat. Okay, so we may be on at 4 o'clock next Sunday, as usual, Easter Standard Time, if our connection, uh, the place we're staying at, is decent. We don't know. We have no idea. Walter actually bought a SIM card that so we can use uh, one of our phones, his yeah. phone, in the states. But hopefully it works okay. But that won't. It won't be. We won't be able to do a live broadcast from that because we only have so many gigabytes. Don't yeah, we? Yeah. Well, I don't know what the upload speed to it is. It's mm. the download. It's we have uh, four gigs download, but no. what I might do though, if we don't have a good connection, like for a live, I might do like what we did in Australia. Every so many days, I might upload a short little video clip of what we're up to, where we're going, things like that. So, we'll see. So, next week, we're playing it all by year. Um, Phyllis is here. Hi, Phyllis. Uh, Andy says, we have a store called 
Oberweis Dairy. They sell the best eggnog. Oh, okay. Um, and Phil said, I had to dig around to find yeah, you. Finally did. 4, 4, 10 p.m. in Fort oh. Lauderdale. So. Why'd you have to dig around and find us, Phyllis? If you just go in and do a... Well, do you get the? Did you click on the little bell icon so you would get a notification when we go live or anytime that I post anything? Because if if you have that clicked on, you should get an email, and you just click on the link in the email, and it'll take you right to to us. Otherwise, you can always find us by doing a search for either under Bland Designs, B L A N D Designs, all one word, or use my name, Stephen Bland. Mind you, there are other Stephen Blands that have channels. But I think I'm the only white guy. So that's how you'll figure it out. I know there's a Stephen Bland that looks like he might be Indian. Um, but I'm not sure. There's a name, an Indian name. Maybe I did come from India. My brother and sister always said I was adopted from India and my real Raul? name was Raul. Yeah. <laughs> Little buggers. Um, Catherine says, no, no, email today. Also had to shop around, wasn't the same as usual. Oh, no, no email today. Also had to shop around. Wasn't the same as usual. Oh, well, that's really weird. Maybe that's why we only have 13 people. Maybe. But I, I didn't do anything different. Oh, uh, YouTube's YouTube screwing around now. again. Oh, they drive me mental. And Phil says, I think you'll find our connections are decent. Yep. I got a notice reminder earlier. Finally went to Bland Designs. Oh, okay. Well, I, you're probably your prices are much better in the U.S. than ours because our our uh, our um, what are you talking about? Cell phone connections. What our prices? What were we talking cell phones? No. Oh, okay. I don't know. What, so what are you talking about? I'm talking cell phones. Yeah. You what said about? their connections are better in the state or good in the states. I think he said. No, Phyllis said, I think you'll find our connections are decent. Yep, okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah. All right, okay, yep. No, the connection isn't really a problem. It's um, speed. I'm not sure what kind of speed we can expect from the place we're staying in. Well, Phyllis says, our connections, two cans and a string. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, oh, yeah, Anita, mm -hmm. Anita's here. But Anita says, hello, I thought I'd missed you. Well, um, Andy says, I didn't get the notification either. Also went to Bland Designs. Really weird. Don't know why. Because I did things as I usually do. And Catherine says, your live usually comes up in my YT inbox. Wasn't there today. Hmm. Ah, oh, geez. What are they doing now? I don't know. Oh, Brenda's here. Hi, Brenda. Brenda, we haven't seen you in a while. What you been doing? Um... Okay, so anyways, yeah, uh, we got this SIM card for his phone. So yeah, I was reading up on it. It's called Roam or something like this. I'm not sure how well it works. Some people post on there that it works really well, and other people have problems with it. So oh. I don't know. No, so we'll we see what know. happens. It's just that if I try and get a plan from my provider, our plans in, in Canada are, are expensive for cell phone, especially for data. And... Uh, so I can get a, a cell phone plan from my provider, but it's um, it's uh, quite expensive by the time. Um, yeah. For and it has practically no data on it. Mm, yeah. So I'm just reading here what people are saying about the connections. Um, Tracy says I always get notifications 15 to 20 minutes late. Hmm. And Anita says. Yeah, you just came up on YouTube. Glad to be here, everyone. Um, now Brenda, she says, I've had a lot of company. Missed being here with you. Okay, yeah, I guess it was the time of the year, right? Now, um, I don't see Nairi yet. You know, Nairi is from Adelaide, um, Australia. And that uh, we met up with Nairi when we were in Australia last February um, and everything. But she's a school teacher. And of course, you know, today is Sunday here for us, but in Australia, it's Monday in the morning for them. And, uh, but the kids I think right now in Australia are on their summer vacation because it's summer there right now. And I remember they were still on vacation. I think we were just at the tail end of their vacation. No, no. When we went in February last year, they were all back in. Oh, the first time. I think it's the, till, I'm not sure Nairi can correct us, but yeah. I think they're off till the end of January or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be it. But anyways, so back to this thing with the connection notifications. 
out of our hands because I don't know what YouTube is doing. I did the same thing I always did, as I said before. So thanks for being here. That you can find us. Um, okay, so yesterday my sewing store, our sewing store, um, Ultimate Sewing, had their annual, or not annual, it's, I don't know, they have it about three times no, a year. No, they have it twice a year. Well, they have one in the I spring thought they'll and have, one in the fall. I thought they have one in the late spring as well for summer. Do they? I, I don't know. I think they did stuff in the summer. Well, maybe they don't. Yeah, that's true. Well, anyways, the semi-annual, I don't know, or whatever this thing is, where they have all their classes. We saw the list of classes, and we had to plan it around our two trips, one to Florida and one to Australia. And um, so that eliminated a lot of classes we could take. Although, a lot of those classes, like, I really wasn't interested in learning how to make a baby, baby doll. doll, baby doll underwear or something. Whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of stuff on there that... But I did sign up for two classes originally. One is... Um, what did I sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> no, a rug making class. Oh, the rug making... We both signed up for the rug making class. It's all the craze right now. I'm sure you've seen it on YouTube or other places where they take something it's called a jelly roll. A jelly roll is a big roll of fabric that are all cut into two and a half inch strips. And you use a certain kind of batting that's also cut that what with, fold it over, and you sew it into a continuous hoop. It's like one of those old style rugs, braided rugs. I think they used to call them. Yeah. Well, this only is, it's made out of cloth. It's made out of cotton. Yeah, out of quilter's cotton. And they're all the rage right now. And I wasn't that interested in learning how to make one because if I'm going to spend that time making that with quilting cotton and it's not particularly cheap well a, a jelly roll cost I bought a jelly roll for this yesterday and that's $55 and then I bought the batting and that was another $40 so you're talking $95 plus tax so over $100 to make a small doormat basically no and I if I'm going to spend that kind of money on a doormat and spend the time making it no one's going to be standing on it I'm sorry you're not putting your dirty feet on my mat no so what am I going to use it for? It's a mat. But Heath was interested in making one, and I thought, well, okay. So we're both going to take the class and make... So I have two of them. He was suggesting they might be okay in the bathroom. Okay, so people don't step on them, they pee on them. Well, whatever. But... <laughs> well, don't put it in front of the toilet. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It was not a contour. But whatever. Well, don't pee on it. Hmm. Well, I thought maybe... A you know, originally I was sort of looking at, you know, the ones that are not round, not oval, and they're just strips, right? And for that that door on the way out to the hot tub. Oh, yeah, that thought went through my head, too. I don't know how big this is going to be when we're done. No, I know. With it, but, well, but that might be okay. It might fit down. But there. I meant later on I could make a longer one yeah. just out of strips. Yeah, yeah. Right, for that door. And well, that's what we're making them out of, out of strips. No, I know, but there's going to be an oval one yeah. that we're making. I was thinking of making one that's just straight Oh, strips. just straight. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. Anyways, and there isn't, what is the other, you took basic quilting. Yeah, just to get the hang of A little it. after the fact. You made that applique quilt, which is beyond. This yeah, but real it's not deep. really piecing on that. Aspect. Well, no, I guess not. Well, now you're going to learn the real thing to do. No. And, uh. I can't remember what the other class was I signed up for. You signed up for that big complicated... Uh, no, that was the second round. Um, I, when I initially went in there, I signed up for... Oh, oh, oh the uh, log cabin log redo with no. Sharon, yeah. Sharon was an instructor that used to work um, there, but she retired in the fall. But she's coming back to teach a couple of classes, and I've taken some classes with her before, and she's a great instructor. And if you don't know what a log cabin is, it's a very basic, traditional... Uh, block in quilt making and I have made one before and I have said I couldn't see the point I didn't like making it but that's because I followed the instructions that came with my very first quilt and it was kind of a I didn't know anything at the time about quilting so that's why I found it difficult because it's not that hard and there are easier methods than the one that was in that particular pattern book so, and they can be very dynamic. Uh, we were watching a thing on YouTube last night, uh, Alan Burns, who's a big guru in the quilting world, 
and she was showing all kinds of different variations on what they call a log cabin quilt. And some of them are quite spectacular, and it all has to do with the colors you pick and how you position the blocks. So I'm taking that. And then when we got home, well, you see, the problem is the way that they do this is they send it out as an email the night before. After the store closes, they send out to everybody the list of courses that are coming up. You got to get there early. I think we told you this story before. Stay in the line. Well, right now it was, what, minus 12 yesterday? Mm -hmm. A bit berber. But so we sat in the car. We were still first in line because as soon as we saw more of them coming in, and there was about 15 minutes before they opened the door, uh, we made a beeline to stand by the door, and then they all lined up after that. But if you don't get in there and be first in the line, you may not get what you want because the classes are not very big because they don't have the room. So, but I hadn't seen any of the samples. I was reading the description. Yeah, because what they do, it's just kind of stupid, is they don't really, they release the, the classes, but then they don't have the pictures of each of the samples, with yeah. the, the, which is stupid. So you don't know what you're looking at. So when we're in there, the samples were up. And it's a, it's a madhouse in there, because there's all these women are just pushing in, and it's just every man, woman, child, dog for themselves. So later we thought, I said, you know, I was looking at, I saw these two quilts I really liked. Um, so I looked at the dates, and the dates did fit into our schedule. So we went down again in the afternoon and to see if there was any spots left in those two, and there were. One of them is a very complex quilt because it has something called Y seams. Now, Y seams, I don't even know how to describe them to you because I don't, well, I do know what they are because I've been watching videos, but basically it's where two triangular pieces <laughs> come together and you've got to sew them into they're kind of inset into the quilt edge so they're at 60 degree angles so you can't just do your usual you know wrong sides together sew down the seam straight you have to kind of pivot the material and there's a trick to it anyways I'm taking this because I want to learn how to do Y seams and the quilt looks really, it's called dynamic, and it is. It is really a, a nice quilt. And the other one is a, a paper piecing one that's not unlike what Walter do, did, except a different method. He did applique. This is an applique. This is where you sew fabric on top of a paper pattern, and you pull the pattern away, and then you get your design. It looks like a landscape, this particular one. It's more of an art quilt. Who's teaching that class? Is Karen. It? Oh, Karen. Karen is, yeah. And um, so I've got four classes. I said I was going to take less classes this session. No, I took four classes, which is why I took last time. You've got two classes. And all of my classes are crunch, crunched into when we come back from Florida before we go to Australia. At one point, for about three weeks in a row, I'm doing three classes a week. Different ones. I hope I can keep up. Plus, in between all of that, I have two retreats. I have one for my guild, which is a two-day one, and then the two of us are going on a four-day retreat that's being sponsored by the uh, store. I'm still and trying I, to figure out what I'm going to be doing. Oh, well, well, maybe some of your projects. I don't know. But um, just see what people say. Pracy says, do they make plastic mat covers for those you put on your couches? <laughs> We're not Italian. Okay. Um, Virginia says, I have all the materials for the rug, but haven't tackled it yet. And Anne Apparently, says, you got to be careful if you, the way you're sewing it, because if you don't sew it quite right, it begins to curl up. Mm -hmm. So you either have a rug or you have a giant salad bowl uh, out of that. Um, Andy says, sounds like Walter's hooked on quilting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's getting there. Not really. I'm interested in doing some sewing projects, but I'm not sure if I'm really that into quilting. So, um, I'm I think probably more into side stuff. Actually, my, what? Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you what? go. Go speak. Talk. No, no. I am interested in the guests and doing some sewing projects. I not. thought it might be kind of cool if we did one together. He still wants to learn how to quilt, like quilt, quilt. And there's a place here that will teach us. It takes about 130 bucks to take a three-hour course to get certified on using a long-arm quilting machine. And I would like to take that course. And then you can rent for $30 an hour time on the machine, the long arm, to quilt whatever you're quilting. And speaking of which, the reason I'm interested in doing this is because my guild is having a 
show, a guild show in November. And they issued what they call a challenge where you they give you half a meter of a fabric and you're supposed to design a quilt around it. And they give you the dimensions for the quilt. And basically the dimensions are, can't be any bigger than 50 by 60. So that's just a what you would call a throw. So I have designed the top. I'm not finished it. I just got it pieced today, but I still have borders to put on it and all that. But here's my design. And I'll show this tomorrow on the vlog as well. But the uh, point out the focal material. It's the one with the butterflies, not the black one. The, yeah. That was the, the fabric they gave us. And then I picked out everything else and I designed this. This is all completely my design. And there'll be a couple of borders that'll go around it to, which will make it stand out even more. Um, I don't know if it's prize worthy. Mm. We'll see. But it's not done. But I thought I'd give you a sneak peek at it because I've been really careful with this one. I'm trying to get all my points lined up properly and the whole bit. Um, so, anyways. I thought it'd be nice if Walter, well, if we designed one together, and then after he takes the basic quilting class too, he can piece some of it, and then he could he could practice doing the quilting part. Well, actually, the the part that I'm not really that keen on the on the uh, uh, piecing part, but the quilting part kind of intrigues me. So you see, I like piecing. So the quilting part, I'm not really so sure about. I'd rather have one of those long arm quilting machines that does it for you automatically. Like I have this one project which I haven't really gotten to that maybe I'll do when we get back from Florida. It's just a, what do you call it? A, 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 it's a, it's a kit, right? Yeah. So you gave me that. Oh, one what? That the, kit that I got? That, yeah. You that, gave me one that you bought on sale and I want oh, to yeah. put that together and wanted to maybe practice doing some quilting on it. Yeah. I mean, the way I sort of figure it isn't really... And an expensive project to do, so... No, because you didn't pay for it. No, I know. <laughs> of course it's not expensive. You didn't pay for it. No. But it would be a good way to get going, because that's a pretty simple pattern that's in there. And you have to learn how to cut. Yeah, well... Pra properly. So what are people saying here? Um, oh, Brett, says, I really enjoyed the blog where you showed your beginning journals. I'm attempting one now. Yeah, and I'm going to continue on with that, Brenda, too. That that journal I'm making right now is going to take several weeks. I'm dividing it up. I've actually worked ahead and made the videos already, but I haven't actually finished it. <clears throat> but I want to work ahead so that if I run into problems when I'm videoing it, I can edit a little bit. I don't usually edit very much, though. Um, Catherine says, Why seems just need to be mastered, but it's very fussy procedural. You'll get the hang of it. Yeah, so I understand. Anita says you're going to be busy. Well, yeah, but that's okay. It's a hobby. I'm retired. Why not? And every time I do one of these projects, I learn something new. Now, I bought all the hardware and everything I need for this. I yeah, like that bag you made. You learned not to do that again. <laughs> yeah, well, so what? And then I go out and I get a pattern for another bag. And... Um, I'm making another bag. It's not quite like the one that I showed you there a week or so ago. That we made. This is actually a very big bag. It's more like a, well, they call it a travel bag. Uh, I want it so that I can take it to sewing classes and things because it'll hold my fabric and everything in it better than what I'm using right now. But when I got reading the pattern the other day for what material I need, it takes a fair amount of material and it takes a lot of hardware. Bag making is not cheap, I can tell you that. And I was looking at the instructions going, good thing I took that other bag class because I think I can figure this one out, but I don't think I would have been able to if I hadn't taken that bag class. And Deborah was a really great teacher for that. So, But anyways, yeah, I got a lot of projects lined up. Um, let's see. Julie says, I also don't know... Don't know how you can make a quilt by using a sewing machine. Easy. <laughs> or do you mean the quilting part of it? I mean, using a sewing machine, mo that's how most people make quilts now. I mean, there's not a lot of hand qu handmade quilts anymore, or people who know how to do that, or people who want to do that. There are some, but 
now with modern technology, you don't need to do it by hand. And sewing your pieces together is pretty easy. Um, the only the, problem with, uh, with uh, the quilting part is uh, one is getting the hang of doing the free motion stuff. And the other part is um, if you've got a huge quilt, depending on the size of your domestic machine, it can be difficult, to, difficult moving that amount of fabric to through, yeah. through the machine. I mean, I've done it, but I haven't yet done one but in purely. You, both of the machines we have have what they call a big throw. Yeah. And it has a, the part from the base to where the needle is is extra wide. So, so you can get more fabric. The under small, it. the smaller domestic machines have a very skinny throat, so there isn't a whole lot of room to maneuver the fabrics. And that's why you hear everybody talking about using the long arms, because the long arms are just as it states, they are huge machines. Your whole quilt is stretched across the machine, and the sewing part is all up above, and you have handles in front of you, and you direct it. It still takes practice to be able to do that, or if you've got a really sophisticated long arm, it has a computer program that you just go in and say, this is where I want you to start, this is where I want you to end, and this is the pattern I want you to do. And, and it'll and it just does do it. it. You just you. walk away, and yeah. it does and it. The, um, the long arms also is, are different in that um, that the sewing machine itself moves, Yeah. not the fabric. The fabric stays in one place. The sewing machine moves over top of the fabric. See, I had this really great idea. You know how we've talked about that we need to redo our dining room, living room? <laughs> I said, you know, we don't really use the living room at all. Um, the dining room we use on occasion. What we could do is just make that whole area in there a really nice sewing area. You know, it could hang well, some of is, the quilts. The part where you walk right in from the hub. Well, no, but I was thinking about that. But you see, we'd rip up the carpet and put hardwood down. And in those two areas we've got that are the cutouts, you could make a couple of stained glass things and frames that could hang there. There's a fireplace in there, so you get a couple of small but comfortable chairs. Mm -hmm. You get a long arm in there. Mm -hmm. And we have a cutting table and an area, and we get our sewing machines and get those sewing uh, cabinets that mm -hmm. where your sewing machine drops down into them and the really nice cabinets and the whole bit. And then we rent this long arm out to people who know how to long arm but don't have a machine and want to do long arm and we serve them and the ladies come over and they pay so much an hour to work on our machine and we'll serve them scones and tea. While they're there, the fireplace on, in the winter, it'll be real nice and cozy and warm and we only need $50,000 probably to do it right. I mean, $25,000, that's going to go to the long arm. Another $10,000 to the tables for the sewing machines. And then, you know, miscellaneous everything, the hardwood floor and everything. Oh, maybe $60,000. So I'm announcing that I'm starting a Patreon site. <laughs> and if you pledge $3,000 a month to help me support this dream in my head. Yeah. If you believe that, I'll give you details at the end of how you can send me a check directly. Okay. Uh, with three references, please. I don't want to bet. Yeah, that would be like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Any of that. So, but one can dream. Um, let's see what's going on. Julie says, I honestly don't know how you can make, oh yeah, by the, so we have talked about that. Um, Kat says, knowing you, Stephen, you'll, you'll learn the long arm machine and you'll, will, will want one. Oh, I want one now. Only two things stopping me from not getting one. We don't have any room for a big long arm and I mean there's no sense fooling around with Mickey there is one you can buy for sixteen hundred dollars that you set your own sewing machine on it and it only takes up about four or five feet and it looks like it works pretty well and he keeps well now mind you is it you know me that they have that long arm the um you can adjust the width of that yeah. thing from eight feet to uh, six or four feet. Yeah, see, he's already thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And uh, for what? How many quilts you can make? Well, that's the other thing. It, it is, it would be really nice to have. See, I want, I can get a cheaper long arm. You can get these ones that you sit down at, they're tiny. Um, but, they don't. They can't be equipped with the software that will make them quilt for you. And you see, I'm all about machines, right? You know that about me. I love gadgets. And 
that would be ideal. I would love to have a machine that just... Why you just hire a little... No, because it's not my quilt. And that was that discussion <laughs> on that YouTube thing we yeah. watched the other day. Where, uh, or today. Well, the, all right, Matt. Hire a little slave for you to piece and... <laughs> oh, well, they got to be able to do housework and cook too and clean and keep me happy. So, that's your job. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we Would have a house cleaner. Yeah, yeah, keep me happy. Mm. Well, you're not doing a really good job, are you? Um, you're not either. Yeah, well, it's not my, <laughs> that's not my job. I didn't sign up for that. Oh. You know what you got when you got me. You got all this and intellect. <laughs> Need I say more? No. I need not say more. So anyways, yeah, what was I talking about? Um, quilting, long arm, uh, why am I getting Alzheimer's early? Um, yeah, whatever. Uh. So somewhere down the road, my mother kicked off tomorrow. I get my inheritance. We could do a lot of things with that, but yeah, no. That's not happening. Okay. Multiple. Tracy says, Stephen, make a king size galaxy quilt with LED twinkle lights and silver threads for something for someone. Next year. Um, well. Um, Anita says, I'm helping with a friend mine teach a journaling class on Monday. A friend of mine teach a journaling class on Monday evening in April to in April fourth through to the damn spell checker. Um, okay, what I decipher from what you just wrote, Anita, is that you're helping someone teach an art journaling class on Monday evening in April to 4th through to 8th graders. That'll be fun. Kids love that stuff. I used to use it in my classroom all the time. And it doesn't matter what age they are, they love it. And they... And usually they're pretty good at it too. Well, not only that, I would think that they're not. Um, they're they're more. Um, they're open, willing to experiment. Open to creativity, yeah. Yeah, you get adults into it, and they're afraid they're going to make a mistake the first timers. Like when I first started teaching art journaling to the bunch of ladies that I teach now every month, they were hesitant, but now they just run with it. Mind you, we haven't had a lot of new it's people. It's sort of like, I guess, class, with but... skiing. You, know, you get little kids, they ski like crazy down the hill because they're not afraid of falling. You get the adults, the adults are afraid of falling. Yeah. I was in the first time you took me out skiing. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> but you know one told me you weren't supposed to go straight down the hill. I got a little worried when I got near the bottom and realized no one had told me how to stop. It just went right down the hill. Needless to say, I don't ski anymore. That was... Bought all this ski equipment and everything, and uh, yeah, that was my influence. That yeah, because I was skiing at the mm -hmm. time. It wasn't something I enjoyed. Well, it wasn't. I didn't enjoy skiing. I didn't enjoy the people. At that time, I found a lot of people who were skiing. If you didn't have the right clothes, if you didn't have the right skis, if you didn't have the right ski boots, if you didn't know what the hell you were doing. They look down their nose at you and are really, really snotty about it. I don't know if that's the same today or not. I mean, everybody skis around anymore. But at that time, and I just was very self-conscious about the whole thing. and So, never did it again. Um, what are people saying? Phyllis says, the word quilt actually means three layers joined together. That's what I was told right. in one of my quilt classes. You can get lots of money from that quilting machine. Yes, you're right, Phyllis. That's exactly what quilting means or what a quilt is. It's not, and there's debates about it. Is a quilt a quilt if it's a wall hanging? In the, the standard definition of a quilt is what you just said. Three layers. Your top, your backing, and in between your batting, your layers. And that's the whole thing with quilting. And actually, all that fancy quilting uh, that they do on it, which is the thing that really makes or breaks a quilt in many cases, they did that originally to hold the quilt together because quilts were made 200 years ago, 100 years ago, as a functional bedding. A type of blanket. And the idea was because it was going to be used for many, many years and it was going to be, you know, roughly handled, they wanted it to stay together. So that's why they quilted it around. And then quilting became more of an art form and 
And in modern day and age with, you know, mass manufacturing of blankets and things, you don't really need to make a quilt to keep you warm. You make a quilt because it's art, because you like making it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Julie says, no, I can use a sewing machine very well, but making a quilt from start to finish, I could not do. Hand sewing all the way for me. Well, I admire you for the ability to hand sew, Julie, because for me, it's bloodletting. I hate hand sewing. I'm not fond of it either. However, having said that, I have been t toying with the idea of actually trying to either do some hand embroidery or and or actually making a small little block, getting a frame, and trying my hand at hand quilting it. But I don't know. I am very klutzy. And I mean, when even sewing on a button, thank God my sewing machine can do that. Actually, that was great, because I hate sewing on buttons. Yeah, I told you. Isn't that what you've done that? And then uh, I needed to sew on a button on my shirt, and I thought, well, okay, I'll try it on the machine. Boy, that mm -hmm. was great. And if you ever need to make a buttonhole, it works really well, too. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I tried that one day to see what that would be like. I mean, we've toyed with the idea of looking into a class or that in making men's shirts. Actually, I was watching two videos today. Oh, yeah? Do that. Did it look hard? Um, it's fiddly. Well, that's what I figured. And why would we want to make men's shirts? Well, well, in this country, you don't have a lot of selection these days. And, and everything's mean, a slim fit. And I'm sorry, I'm just at that point in life where I'm just not quite a slim fit anymore. I'm a classic fit, which means fat. But they, they don't, all clothes. We went and out, well, not only that, they seem to cut them so that um, they're they're slim around the waist and they're they're tight around the arms. Like actually, I was trying on a new jacket, like a new uh, winter jacket, because I like I have two kinds of winter jackets. I have a light kind of ski coat that's short that I use when it's um, not super cold out, and then I have a big huge parka that I use when it's really cold out. But I like the little short one because it's easy, it's light. I just put it on, go out in the car and stuff like that, and it's enough, right? Whereas the big parka is great for shoveling snow and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm looking for that, and I tried on several coats that were large or extra large. <laughs> but for some Too reason, XL. like went to one place, I have thin arms for a man, and I'm trying on, I have thin arms. My wrists are thin. Anyway, I tried on this one coat, Steve was with me, and I could barely get my arms down the coat. Because yeah, like they were it all... was like it was like super tight. And I'm thinking to myself, what's the a well mind you, they had a ton of them left. What uh, what's the average man do? Like that, that has that's got a, th a bigger build than I Well, have. we're not big men, really. I mean everybody I know is a lot bigger than me. In many cases, and I don't know where they're buying their clothes. Where? Yeah, and I, 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 but I've noticed, like at the gym, and that a lot of guys seem to be wearing. They're not wearing coats; they're wearing layers of uh, fleece and stuff like that because, probably because they can't fit into a coat. No, but yeah. So you know, if we could learn how to make our own shirts, kind of a thing, like nice shirts, um, then I wouldn't have to have a whole wardrobe anymore that comes completely from Mark Work Warehouse. And which doesn't have any shirts anymore. No. No, that's right. They don't have anything. I went either. to look this year and they have nothing. No. Ever since and then like, took them over. Uh, Sears folded, so that's not... We don't have Sears And anymore. I mean, you don't and want it from Walmart because that's you cheap can go to You can go to a couple of the other stores, but then you, they, you have to get into designer stuff. And the designer stuff is all slim fit, so... Yeah, it's all made for... And, and besides that, it costs an arm and a leg. It's all made for guys who live in China or something or in... Thailand yeah, or something, who problem. have like little girlish figures that are slim. And they all come, they, well, I tried a shirt on in Australia there the first time we went to Australia and I was looking for a shirt and I, kept, I tried on a medium because that's usually what I took in, take in a shirt. No way. Couldn't get in the medium. Tried the large. No way. Couldn't get in the large. I ended up buying an extra large and I just I thought tried, you got a double extra Was it large. double extra large? Because I just tried that shirt on. Uh, this morning when I'm picking out stuff for Florida, I can't wear it. Well, even then when I bought it, it was tight under the arms mm -hmm. and that, but I got it at the time. So That's the other thing I was finding is that the coats that I tried on were 
tight around the top. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know. They've yes, got, yes, we're heavier. Weird. We 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 do not have the body of a twenty year old because if we did, they'd want it back because we're probably abusing it. But we are men in our sixties. Okay, we're not slim, but we're not humongously Over the fat. Of be so you know, and when I say we, I meant me. But I, I go away. No, no, I wouldn't. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Good thing. See, I wear checks because if you wear verticals, you never wear horizontal because it makes you look fatter. But the problem is if you wear verticals, you look shorter. So I go for a check. That way you don't know whether I'm coming or going. <laughs> or the other. But, yeah, it might be interesting to learn how to make a man shirt. But I'm sure it is quite fiddly uh, with it all. So what no, I am up to the challenge to do that. Yeah, like well, yeah, but you're... You've got a talent for making garments because think of the dresses you've made yeah, over yeah. the years. I mean, never mind. You don't want to know. Um, so what's going on here? What are people saying? Oh, yeah, here's one. Pracy says, long arm machines. Check obituaries for old Mennonites and estate sales. <laughs> actually, actually, Mennonites probably don't use long arms. Actually, you know that one that Donna bought? Yeah. Donna, you know yeah, the one yeah, that I used to yeah. work with? She bought a secondhand mm -hmm. long arm. She didn't buy it first. No. Well, there may be. Actually, I didn't think about that. Maybe I should start scouring Kijiji and other things just to see. Um, Catherine says, that set your own machine on is not a good thing. I've tried it. Don't like it. Oh. Oh, that, yeah. Well, that depends on how deep the throat of the machine is. And yeah. even then, like, I mean, once we have, I have a 10 or 11 inch throat, but even then you're only limited to that. 10 or 11 inches, which which, um, which still seems a bit restrictive. Phyllis says there are a lot of long-arm sewing machines that work wonderfully and don't cost an arm and a leg. Keep looking. We had one at my studio that did the job beautifully. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. But the other problem, too, is it's not just the cost of, of a long arm. It's where do we put it. We don't have... Like, I'm half serious about the whole thing I just said about the living room dining room. Well, there's that big whole hallway down towards the doors down in... Uh... That would look crappy. Okay, fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> may, well, actually... And it not... wouldn't look crappy in the living room? <laughs> no, not if you design it right. Okay. Of course, you could design that area down there so it would be right, too, I suppose. We'll, well see. We'll see. I think we still need to take the course first yeah. and because we've never actually used a long arm. We've seen no. them use. We've never had our hands actually on one yeah. to use it. So, um, Pracy says, uh, Cherry, I watched a live estate sale and their dining room was full of quilting machines. Hmm. And she says, ever see G's Ben quilts? Millennial fit? Oh, Laura's here. Hi, Laura. Um, nope, never seen G's Ben quilts. Is that on YouTube, uh, Phyllis? Anyways. Um, so. So. We talked about we, quilting. We, we got that. Okay, so. You saw our haul video. I think most of you did. Of all the free stuff that we got. We got our points back. And I explained that at the beginning of that video, but very quickly, squeaky, squeaky wheel gets the oil. I finally found an uh, email in, with, internally in their company, and I, someone called me. I sent them a very lengthy epistle about what the problem was, had a timeline on the problem, what everything we'd been going through, and I sort of told them what I was going to do if they didn't rectify the situation. And I had some, what we used to call when I was a teacher, escalating consequences from that which started out with one cutting up the credit card two never buying any other products or any other services three going to the media four going on social media five uh, putting things out to other groups with people who have had similar problems and broadcasting it all over everywhere well a lady called profusely apologetic immediately solved it all Gave us an extra 300,000 points, which represents $300 worth of freebies. So our points went from 320 to about, uh, or 330 to 620, 630 dollars. $630 is what we had in points equivalent. 
Mind you, you can only cash in as, uh, on one day a maximum of $500 worth, but we went shopping. And so we decided we'd do a haul video. People love haul videos. In one day, I had over 90 views. Like, bang, on that one. I think the secret is to do more haul videos. But, um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff. You know, non-perishable items, things like that. Cleaning stuff, paper products. Walter's favorite popcorn. I don't know if I'm a fan of that cheese. Oh, I don't like it. I like the caramel, though. But I've always liked caramel popcorn. Um... So anyways, they did come through with it, and we still have 200 points. Well, I went out and thought, well, better spend it. And actually, points. what we're going to do for going forward is not collect it up as much anymore. Oh, that's a cute modern phrase. Going forward. Going forward. Yeah, that's what everybody says now. Now, going forward. That's what they used to say at work. Going forward. Well, anyway, so like, but, you know, not, not keep as huge a balance as we used to have. No, well, so going forward, we're going to use oh, some of that. Go ahead. Go ahead. That go warm away. place. That warm place. What we are? It's Florida. <laughs> um, so there are people saying, uh, Laura got her winter jacket from Walmart. Very warm. Well, that's good, Laura. <laughs> Actually, the only one I have found that I really liked at Walmart was um, one of those ones that they use in construction with a great big bright fluorescent. Oh, the one that was on so it. people can see you and then hit you with their yeah, car. Yeah, I know. Well, I didn't really want to walk around with one of those. <laughs> what? Like you're walking around with a bull tie on your back? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, with that. But uh, uh, Phyllis says those quilts have a wonderful story. Google them. These uh, G's Bend. G's Bend quilts. G's? There's a geese. No, well, take a look for that, Phyllis. Okay, so we got our points back and we're taking what we can with them. Yeah, so, so we spent $442.05. You can only cash in them in in increments of $10, so I had to pay them $2.05 for all that stuff that's in the hall, so check it out um, if you're interested. Uh, okay, so what's newsworthy? Well, part of what's newsworthy is nothing new because everybody in North America knows all about the whole thing with Trump, the wall, and the fact that there's 800,000 people uh, who are not getting paychecks because of Trump not backing down until the Democrats. Well, and the Democrats won't back down either, so I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So anyways, how does that affect us? Didn't think it would, but it does. See, when we go to Florida on Tuesday, we're flying out of Toronto Airport, and before we leave, get on the plane, we go through American customs on this side of the border. Because yeah, the Canadian, the Canadian airports all have American customs at the airport. There are actually Americans that work and live in Canada, but they're working for the American um, government. And uh, so our, we go through customs first, and then what happens is... The flight that leaves Canada becomes basically the same as a domestic flight mm -hmm. in the U.S. So we don't have to land in an international. We don't have to go through customs when we land yeah. in the U.S. Which is actually kind of nice in the old days. That was very nice. In the new days, under the new rules of things, it's not that much more convenient. However, it's really less convenient right now because all those people who work at those the, at the American Customs are all federal employees. And they're not getting a paycheck. So they're not showing up for work, which I don't blame them. I mean, these poor people are not getting paid an awful lot of money to start with. They're being held hostage by their president, who's supposed to be, the president of the United States is supposed to be there for the people, right? And all that, yeah, we know the, the pol real politics of this stuff, but whatever. So he's holding the poor working class Americans hostage so he can build a stupid wall Stop Mexicans from getting into to the U.S. Okay, can you spell stupid? Yes, T-R-U-M-P. But it affects us because now they're telling us we have to arrive at the airport for a flight to Florida three hours in advance. Not to mention coming back. Coming we may not back, be coming back. Most of the federal employees work in the airports in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I think Miami has already closed down one of their terminals mm -hmm. because of the number of employees they're calling in sick. So, 
when I said earlier that we may or not be able to do a live stream for Florida, <laughs> we may not have to worry about that at all because we may never ever get out of Toronto on Tuesday. We don't know. We don't know what well, to expect. Well, if it was that bad, the airline would have sent me a notification. So It's Air Canada. Yeah, they, they're really good. Yeah, well. Like, come on, Pterodactyl Airlines is about the only thing that's less than them. Well, it could be worse. It could be Sunwing. Oh, God, yeah. And notice it's Sunwing. Only one. It's a singular. They only have one wing on the damn plane. You might get there. Sunwing is one of our discount carriers. and I don't know. We've never flown them, so we don't really know. And I know people that have flown them and have liked them. Yeah, but well, and we know a lot they of people did, have flown them. They in. did haul one of their... Uh, their um, um, what do you call it, pilot slap off the plane last year because he was drunk. Oh, good to know. Okay. Well. Wow. But the other part of the problem is that it's not just the people that are doing the screening at the airports, it's also the air traffic controllers that are working for, for working, the air traffic controllers yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, And that's a little bit scary. scary. Well, I don't know. So we'll see. It could be a real adventure. Yeah. Not necessarily fun coming home. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm not quite as worried about the coming home part. Because let's just say... Yeah, that, I know, but I don't want to be sitting around the airport for 24 hours waiting for... Well, no, if it's happened to that, yeah, okay. But I was just thinking, oh, well, we'll just go back to where we're staying, see if they got another room and stay another week. But whatever. Um, Pracy's still on about... Okay, she she's found us a long arm machine on eBay for a thousand bucks. Pracy, do you know what the, do you know the meaning of the word enabler? Because <laughs> that's what you are right now. Um, Anita would love to build the world. Thousand U.S. or a thousand Canadian? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the thousand U.S. is. Thirteen hundred dollars Canadian. Thirteen hundred thirty-two dollars Canadian. Andy says you could stream live from the airport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As we're sleeping in a corner somewhere, uh, Price said, "Where are SMW going in Florida? Fort Lauderdale. We're staying at a. Actually, we're staying. It, we've never stayed at this resort before, but it's owned by a guy that owned a resort that we stayed at a couple of times in the past, and so, it was really great. It's actually a guest house, but anyway. Okay, sorry. Technical. It's a guest house." But he bought, he sold that place a few years ago, and then he recently bought this other place. Um, and it's, it's not got, as close to the beach. No, but that's okay. No. Um, he's got good reviews on TripAdvisor and things like that about it. And like the times that we stayed there before, um, it was great. So we'll see. <coughs> The rooms are always. <coughs> he basically um, <coughs> renovated an older place he bought. <coughs> Just a second, I'm having a choking. Like he did the last awful. time, <coughs> and uh, it's um, it was okay. really nice when we stayed. We found that place and it was really nice to stay there for us. So um, um, that's why we always sort of like. I mean, go back. I know Fort Lauderdale doesn't have the best beaches in the world, but we don't really care about the beaches that much. No. Thanks, All Anita. All we care is it's warm and it's green. <laughs> and it's not here. And it's not here. So, um, Pracy says... It uh, doesn't even have to be super warm. No. <laughs> Pracy says... <coughs> oh, now I know why I don't eat popcorn. Yeah, okay. Ugh, chokes me. Says Fort Lauderdale has Wawa convenience stores. Stop for coffee. Wawa. Yeah, I don't know. I've never noticed that when we were there before, but okay. I'm off coffee, but, well, not completely off coffee, but it was giving me some problems, I thought, so I thought I'd get, cut it out a bit. So anyways, yeah, so we'll see what happens. <coughs> so what's, oh, jeez. Okay, what's eating Walter? <coughs> you said there was something. Well, people that can't pronounce our provinces <laughs> yeah we're trying to be delicate with this okay oh cindy's here hi cindy oh wawa she says is a gonkum word for canada geese oh wawa it's, we went to wawa yeah we went to actually the place called wawa in northern ontario many years ago and that's what my nephew used to call me when i was a little when he was a little kid he used wawa? To call me wawa. <laughs> that meant something else 
No, no. Probably not. Um, no, it, actually, you know. there's a couple of people online that are sort of promoting stuff in Canada right now. And for some <coughs> reason, they can't pr pronounce the word province in yes. our country. For some reason, they seem to be coming up with constantly, <coughs> and they seem to be stumbling over it and calling it provenance. And there's no D oh, yeah. in the word province. And it really annoys me. It's really annoying me. I don't know, to the point where it's like it shouldn't be annoying me that much when somebody mispronounces something. But it's so blatantly, um, so blatantly wrong. Province is spelled P-R-O-V-I-N-C-E. -E. There is no D in it. So it comes up, and they keep calling it. They seem to be having a problem pronouncing it. It just drives me nuts. And actually, they have problems pronouncing some of the names of our provinces, too. Like Nova Scotia comes up as Nova Scotia. They finally figured out how to say Saskatchewan, though. Before, yeah. they were saying, like, a Saskatchewan or something. And uh, they were even having trouble pronouncing... Um, I can't think of what it was. It just went out of my head. But I get it. You know, like you're in a foreign country, a foreign country. and you don't really you see a word that don't don't you don't recognize. But provinces are really unusual. Like I mean, Canada has provinces, but uh, but so do sixty other countries in the world. So we're being a little hesitant about what we say about this because we don't want to offend anybody. And you know, people who live in glass houses. I mean, I can mispronounce words. Yeah, I mean, Left like, right. I mean, if it's a word that's spelt the same, like I was thinking of foyer, we call the word foyer, what's it? No, Americans, call Americans foyer. say foyer, we say and foyer. And we call foyer, but it's spelt the same. Yeah, but the it's reason we say that is because it, out west they don't. Out west they say foyer in Canada. We say foyer, and I think we may have mentioned this before, it's because of our proximity to Quebec. That was the one they couldn't say. They were calling it... Qua, no, not Quebec. Uh, so oh. Quebec or we, something. Quebec. 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 No, 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 no. It wasn't que, Quebec. Or, no, Quebec. not Quebec. Um, well, technically speaking. They called it something else. Technically speaking, you'll hear people call Quebec Quebec, but really that's not how it's pronounced. It actually is supposed to be pronounced as Quebec. 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 That's from the French side. That's the French side. But we call it, but we call it Quebec. Called Quebec. 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 And, but they were having a real... They had a real weird pronunciation for it. But yeah, I can see that. But like back to foyer. Out west, they'll say foyer. Americans will often say foyer. I think even the British will say foyer. And it is spelled that way. F-O-Y-E-R. But when we see E-R in Ontario on the end of a word, we do the French uh, way of saying it, which is E R in French, is A. So it's foyer. And that's how we say it. It's the same with the three letters A-G-E. Age. So P-O-R-T-A-G-E. We would say that in Ontario, for the most part. As portage. As portage. You go out west. Even as close as Winnipeg. They'll call it portage. And yes, age. A-G-E is age, but we give it the French pronunciation because we're that close to Quebec. However, but, they, but if you look at the word, it's still P-O-R-T-A-G-E with two pronunciations. But yeah. When you go to, when you say the word province, P-R-O-V-I-N-C-E, and Providence, P-R-O-V, I don't know, how do you spell Providence? Uh, it has a D in it anyway. Providence. <laughs> Providence means the aid, the story behind something that's old. Is providence. So these guys were saying, yeah, in Canada, they have providences. No, we have provinces. And there are, how many countries did you find? 62 countries in the world no, that have... 60 country, no, no, well, 64 countries in the world that have provinces. Yeah. So the other thing, too, that is, this is where I don't want to... Okay. We're watching a very famous couple on YouTube that many of you have seen probably and they mispronounce the most common of words no matter what 
And the thing that bothers me about that is, like, yeah, everybody's going to mispronounce a word because we have so many words in our language and other influences from other languages that, yeah, don't ask me to turn around and try to read the side of a pill bottle or even the side of a cereal box because with all those chemicals and things, I have no idea how you say them. I butcher them to death. But what gets, what I think you were getting at is that they were trying to drum up business from our country. It might be good for you to do some research um, first about how to sound Canadian. Our English is different from I don't American. Know, Canada. And that's the sad part about it. These people live not far from the border. They're not coming from the deepest south of the United States. They live in you know, Washington State. So they're just underneath British Columbia. I don't know. It was kind of annoying uh, with it. But Tracy has a challenge here. She says, or Phyllis says, say Massachusetts. M Massachusetts. Is it Massachusetts? I know we're pronouncing it wrong. We're probably pronouncing it wrong. Wrong. So, okay, point made. Get it. Okay, well, it's like Toronto. We say Toronto. And Americans would probably say Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> but they, they're pronouncing it the way it's spelled. Yeah. We're saying it the way but it's. But I'm saying the word, whether it's Massachusetts the way we pronounce it or the way you pronounce it, it's still spelled the same. Right? But province doesn't have a D in it, and they're saying Providence. Yes. Yeah. Which is, there's no D in it. I guess what bothers me about whether it wasn't the way they were pronouncing it that bothers me. It's the fact they're just showing their ignorance on how little they know about what goes on beyond north of the 49th parallel. Okay, maybe I'm saying Massachusetts wrong, okay? But I know where it is and I've been there, okay? I know that the United States have states. I know that the United States... They're not statutes. No, they're not statutes. I know the United States have a president as the leader of their country. There's an awful lot of Americans out there that don't know that Canada does not have a president. We have a prime minister. There's people out there who don't know. They will call. I've heard Americans call our provinces states. They're not states. They're provinces. And, yeah, I mean, if you asked me what... They call their divisions of land in Thailand or Indonesia. I would have to guess because I don't know. But I don't live anywhere near that. You know, North America has only got three countries in it. We have media. Anyway, so anyways. that's why it's eating me. Yeah. But anyways, if that's all it's meeting you. Oh, Phyllis is spelled out. Massachusetts. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know how we say Massachusetts. I don't know now anymore. Say Massachusetts. That's how we yeah, say it. Massachusetts, so we don't have the chew. Don't we don't do the chew. She we also says her dad was Canadian French and called toothpaste toothpaste. Well, that's the accent. Actually, that's off. Yeah, that, that's French would call toothpaste. But that's because they're speaking English. They're speaking English with a French accent. <laughs> <laughs> and Laura's, you go speak English at Newfoundland, they talk something totally different. <laughs> I don't know. I just found it really funny because I, I don't want to say who these guys are, but you know who they are. Many of you do. And they're trying to do something that's a business on there. And it just, I wouldn't have any faith in, in going into business with them when you haven't figured out. Oh, they, they're damn right illiterate, okay? That's what I'm saying. They can't read, they can't write, and they can't speak. Okay, I said it, but I didn't say their names. No. And I'm not going to say their names, because that would be nasty. Um, Phyllis says it's Chew. Yeah, Chew. Massachusetts. Ma Massachusetts. Massachusetts. We don't, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't pick up on that. Okay. So uh, then you know we're a Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we don't say a boot. 
A boot. No. We say about. 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 Newfoundlanders, they'll say a boot. Yeah, Newfoundlanders say yeah. a boot. Uh, Anita says, Walter, I get it. The two words you were talking about have completely different meanings. Well, I'm different. I'm saying different spellings, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're... they're I mean, I understand that certain words have two pronunciations. Um, I mean, Massachusetts, the way we say it, is spelt still the same way as a Massachusetts. Yeah. There isn't any additional... But when you go from province to providence, there is no D in the word province. No. You know, like, I mean, I can see you maybe calling it Provence or Province or something like that, but not Providence because it's, there's no D in it. Yeah, I know. And the other thing, too, that bugs me is I've noticed this. This is just in general. I've noticed lately people using an S on the end of words, they like. I hear people referring to YouTube as the YouTubes and the internets. And there's a character on a show called Letter Kenny. And I know that in some parts of the northern United States, I think you can actually get it. It's a Canadian show. It's a parody about Canadian life, and it's just a big joke. But there's one character on there that puts an S on everything. He goes like, there's another character he's referring to named Katie. He goes, yes, Miss Katie's, that's the ways it is. Don't you know them doors and things in the internets? And I read it in the papers and on the YouTubes and stuff like this. But he does that on purpose for his character as, a, as humor. But I have noticed people now saying this a lot. And I don't think it's influenced because saying of the Saying it show. on YouTube videos. Yeah, on the YouTubes, on the internets. And I didn't know, when did it become plural? That's why I don't understand. Hmm. But whatever. Things like that bother me. I was an English teacher. Sorry. All right. L linguistics are everything. Um, yeah, if that's all I have to worry about, then oh, it's yeah. not a big thing. So, uh, oh, Anita says sh she's figured out who it is. Huh. <laughs> um, and then Priest says, the Philly neighborhood of, oh, you're just toying with me now, of oh, don't make me try and say this. Pashunk is pronounced Pashunk. Pashunk. I have no idea. I've never, we've never, never heard, heard, that. heard of that. Well, lots of people can't pronounce where we live. No, Oshawa. But then, yeah, that one I could see. We have an awful lot of places that are named after. I know that tribes. Oshawa, my aunt used to call it Oshava. Oshava? Oshava. Because the W, the W in Holland is spelled, is pronounced with a V. Not, so yeah. they say us. Well, how about Mississauga? I bet you that throws people yeah. for a loop when they see that one. So, yeah, whatever. Oh, and uh, Anita says, change the topic. Oh, this week is CHA in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They don't call it uh, CHA anymore. They call it, is it Creativation or something like that? They changed the name a year or two ago. Um, I've always wanted to go to that, but... Problem is, you have to be a vendor or someone with the press or at least make it sound like you've got like a YouTube with a lot of followers and you're going to do stuff with it. And it's where they show all the new stuff in crafting uh, every year. In fact, Tim Holtz is putting up stuff already of all the new dyes and everything he's got. And I had just got done telling somebody or talking with somebody at my art journaling class about Tim Holtz's stuff. And you know, I love Tim Holtz's stuff. But I haven't bought a lot of Tim Holtz stuff in a long time because it's all variations on a theme. And he's extended now into the fabric world. Now, he always had fabric, but now he's got new lines of fabric coming in. And he's and, selling scissors, too. And he's selling, yeah, now he's marketing his scissors, you know, and they're good scissors because I've got several pairs of them that are made by Tonic. He's now marketing them to quilters. And I was having this discussion with a lady in another quilt store last weekend about that. And there was some other designer and she was showing me that designer's scissors and she says they're the same ones. And yeah, they're made by the same company, by Tonic. One has Tim Holtz's name on it. These other ones are a different color and have this quilter's name on them. But she said they're really good for applique. And I had said, well, yeah, they're good scissors, but... And then I realized... Yeah, the reason I'm having trouble cutting fabric with them is because I've been using them to cut paper. And if you use scissors to cut paper, it will dull them very quickly. So I'm thinking I should go out and buy 
uh, another pair just strictly for fabric because they are good scissors um, with it. But he's now moved into the mar marketing some of his stuff uh, beyond mixed media. He's now moving it into quilters and things like that. Well, you know, he's got to get a market somewhere. I mean, keep his job kind of a thing. So, um, and Anita says... Yes, there've been lots of there's lots of YouTubes on the week on on the on this week on the convention. Yeah, I know I always watch all of those all the time. Problem is they put out all these new products, and I remember when I used to work at the uh, Class Act scrapbooking store. Right after CHA every year, they'd all come running in the store or call the store. Can you get this? Can you get that? I saw it on CHA, and at CHA they make it sound like stuff is going to be available very very soon no it's not it used to take us a year to get some of Tim Holtz's new stuff now part of the problem with that is she deals with a very large wholesale distributor in Michigan and what that wholesale uh, does is they put the mom and pop stores at the bottom of the list but they supply Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, all the big ones and they all get first dibs at anything as soon as it comes out and when they get it into their supplies. And then, so it usually takes about a year. And then you're trying to explain this to customers and they don't get it because they want it now. Of course they want it now because they've seen it on CHA and all the hype is there and everybody's excited about it. And it can take, you know, yeah, six I know. months you to a year to get. You never quite figure out how these manufacturers operate because they show all these wonderful products at one of these shows and they don't have it available right away. Yeah. And really what they should be doing is showing these wonderful products and have a supply of stuff available. Um, just I'm just looking here, there's some controversy going on. Okay. Julie says, Will someone please tell who these people are? Are you talking about Tim Holtz? Uh, uh, yeah. Tim Holtz is the guru of crafting. Um, he's been around for years. He uh, has great stamps, dies. If you're into mixed media, scrapbooking, card making, Tim Holtz is the guru of all of that stuff. And if you still don't know who I'm talking about, all you need to do is put his name into Google and you'll find tons of things about him. Into YouTube, you'll find tons of videos about him and everything else. I met him once. And he is exactly the same in real life as he is on his YouTube uh, videos or on his Facebook Lives and the whole bit. He's a very nice person. He's very genuine and he's extremely creative. Um, let's see, what else are people saying? Uh, Laura says, I'm still trying to get Dina Wakeley's large journal 10 by 13. Yeah, no, I have one. And I've had it for a while. I think it's the same one you're talking about. I got the large one. Uh, but yeah, it took a long time for it to get into the store. But you know what you have to do? If you're waiting to get it at Michael's and use your coupons on it, you'll probably never find it. Because Michael's gets one in every six months, basically. Your best bet is to bite the bullet, save your pennies, and go down to Class Act and order it. Because I think right now she can get it relatively quickly because those have been out for quite a while if it's the one I'm thinking of um, uh, just seeing what people wait for months and months to get Tim's glass mat yes yep yeah so you can't really blame the stores for that it's not their fault it's the fault of their wholesalers Wholesalers? Well, no, wholesalers. when it's also the manufacturers are not, <clears throat> they're showing the stuff that's coming up, but they're not, they don't have a supply of stuff. So it, uh, it, uh, it takes the months to get it out. Yeah. Well, Pracy says, <laughs> go dumpster diving at uh, A.C. Moore, Michaels, or Joann's. I know people who found uh, outlights uh, in the dumpster. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff on YouTube about the stuff that people find in the dumpsters from these places. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah, so anyways, um, it'll all come out with all their new stuff. Actually, last year, and I don't expect this year's going to be indifferent, 
it was kind of sad with what they came out. They didn't come out with anything revolutionary. Everything's a theme. Everything's just a variation on a theme because there's not a lot new under the sun. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the smaller craft stores are going out of business because everybody's got all that stuff. I don't buy craft stuff anymore. Well, yeah, it's because I buy fabric all the time. But, um, but the other thing is it's just I haven't seen anything that's made me want to go, oh, I got to have that because it's all variations on a theme. And Anita says, I'm hoping to see something fantastic this year, but I'm thinking the market is saturated. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. The market is saturated. Um, you know, like I said, everything's a variation on a theme. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, what are we watching? Well, on TV, I'm watching Vikings. Again. Um, I don't. It's on the History Channel. Uh, it's good. It's been on for about six seasons. And I love it. It's not for the squeamish, though, because there's an awful lot of blood and guts in it. But I really like that show. We saw a couple of movies on Netflix. Um, Mr. Holmes is kind of interesting. It's a little weird, a little bit different. It's about Sherlock Holmes in the latter part of his life. Fiction, of it's course. It's actually been out on Netflix for quite some time. Has it? Yeah. Well, that's fine. Um, did I say it hadn't been? No. I just said we watched it. Hmm. I stand corrected. Not... Okay, okay fine. fine. Moving on. Whatever. Um, it's got Ian McCullen in it, and he plays Mr. Holmes, and Sherlock Holmes is on, the, he's got dementia, or starting early stages of dementia. And it's kind of interesting to watch it. Um, it's not the most fantastic movie I've ever seen in my life, but it's definitely worth watching, it's I think. It's a little bit sleepy in spots. Yeah, a little bit. And then we saw a horror called The Lodgers, which... Um, that was weird. That was weird. It's a horror. I don't know if it's worthwhile watching. I don't know if it's worth the effort or not, but I mean, it didn't cost us anything. Well, except for a subscription on Netflix. Uh, I haven't seen anything really new on YouTube, except, and this leads me into what's cooking. I had reviewed this site, oh, some time ago on my vlog, and I think we've talked about it on here. It's um, a cooking show, and it's by a guy who goes by Shotgun Red, and he has these ghetto, down-home cooking kind of recipes for things. So he had this recipe for taco soup. And what was it? It was, or five-can soup it was called. He had a can of corn, a can of crushed or chopped tomatoes, um, ground, ground hamburger that he browned, um, some onions, I think, some... Oh, a package of taco seasoning mix yeah. and a package of ranch dressing mix. What else was in it? It was... Um, oh, pinto beans. Yeah. And there was something he called... Well, I think that was the chopped tomatoes. No, it was... The, uh, I think it might have been tomato sauce. He called something homily. Yeah. But I don't know what that is. And I just tried looking it up, and I have no idea what that is. Anybody and, know what that is? I don't know. <laughs> but he, so anyway... He had I found a recipe online that was sort of similar. You and cook it in the crock pot. And you put it all in. And it looks pretty... It looks like chili, basically. But as it cooks in your hot pot for about six hours, it becomes more liquidy, and it becomes a soup. And then you serve it with a dollop of sour cream in the center and corn chips around it. So Walter decided to make it last night for dinner. I call it ghetto soup, but actually it was quite tasty. It was kind of like it's, eating it's a liquid like taco. It's almost like chili. Yeah, kind of thing. But actually, it was quite tasty. But he's hilarious. He's got this... I don't know if this is his wife or his girlfriend. Her name is Sheila. And you never really see her. She's doing the camera work. But it breaks me up every time because he goes, So, how are you doing, Sheila? And you hear this little voice. Okay! <laughs> In the background. So, say goodbye, Sheila. Bye! How are you doing now? Do you like that, Sheila? Love it! <laughs> it's just these one word things it just I don't know why it makes me laugh but it does but if you want a bit of a a laugh on a cooking show and some interesting recipes like what was he making last he was night making turkey gizzards oh tur pickled turkey gizzards mmm sounds delicious um, apparently uh, that's something I won't do yeah apparently gizzards are part of the stomach in a turkey or something yeah. I don't know 
don't really think, he was just talking about how delicious they were for snacking on them. He's making these big mason jars full of turkey gizzards. Yeah. No thanks. Yep. But it's kind of amusing. Uh... Hominy, yes, used in southern cooking. But what is it? Um, Pracy says, I'm watching the first 48 homicide edition. Atlanta. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And Anita says, also, you get decor and craft things at Dollar Tree to decorate with, and they are undercutting other stores. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Pracy says, make Cincinnati chili. Okay. And then Pracy also says, postal with hom homie? hominy? Hominy? Hominy. That's hominy. what he called it. Hominy? But what is it? I don't know. Still, no <laughs> one's telling us. Uh, Anita says, I don't really know if it is like a bean or corn. Oh. Catherine says, it's corn. Oh, Okay. Um, Pray says gizzards equal the organ that grinds food and grit. Yeah. Yes, we, we looked that one up. Doesn't that sound delicious? Pickled even. Really. Um, and Phyllis says hominy, hominy, hominy. Hominy is corn, like grits. Oh. Ooh. Had that once. Not again. That's something we're not used to. And Catherine says dried maize corn. Oh, okay. Oh, Lisa is here. Lisa... I'm going to say your name wrong. Gomi? Welcome. I don't know if you're one of our lurkers and this is the first time you've chatted or I just missed that before, but you're welcome here. Homi is made from whole corn kernels that have been soaked in a lye or lime solution to soften the tough outer hulls. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And Anita says it is white. I've had it. Not much flavor. Mm. Okay. Well, Walter got a different recipe and... I had a different recipe. I just did a can of corn and I did a, a can, some tomato sauce in it and with that. So we only had the can of corn and we didn't have anything else in there. Like we had... Well, we had other stuff in there. Well, no, I changed the recipe actually a bit. So I had like pinto beans, black beans, a, a can of corn. I had a can of uh, chopped tomatoes and some a can of tomato sauce and some water. And taco seasoning. Well, actually, it was quite tasty. It's kind of one of those comfort food ideas for winter. Um, and speaking of of winter, I saw your pictures, Anita, and I guess you're getting a lot of snow. We don't have any snow here. It's so cold. It's cold. No yeah. Uh, Lisa says she's a regular lurker. Okay. Well, nice of you to appear. So we meet you there, Lisa. But yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Um, so. What's coming up? Well, like we said, we're off to Florida. Um, so hopefully it'll be nice and it's not here and it's, we get there. And it'll be green. It's gray yeah, it's here. Green. Yeah, it's gray it's here. It's gray here and no leaves on any trees and it's like that. Yeah, There's not flat. even any snow. No. So anyways, hopefully we'll get there. So uh, in spite of Trump or whatever. So I guess that's about it. Pracy says we got two inches of snow last night and no one in my hood shovels. Okay. And Laura says, so chili soup. I make that too. Yep. Okay. What are we having for dinner tonight? Leftover beef bourguignon. Oh, beef bourguignon. Oh. Well, actually, it's frozen. Speaking of French people. Oh. Poo poo on that. And Anita says they got seven inches. All right, well... Yeah, you can have it. Keep it there. Okay, so I think it's time to say bye-bye. Um, maybe look for us next Sunday. Maybe look for some surprise quickies. I don't know. It all depends on what our connection is. So I hope everybody has a good week, and we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye for now. Say goodbye, Walter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.